we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hello, everyone, and welcome to Easy Street. And today, I like to talk about the Great Reset. And uh, before I uh, get started, uh, I need to make sure and let you know that you can find Easy Street on Spreaker and several different platforms on Good Talk Radio and now on Cutting Edge TV on Roku. And I'm uh, very proud that we have that new uh, platform to, to uh, get our shows out there. But this Great Reset, uh, first of all, I'm going to explain the great reset in a, my way. <laughs> and so uh, the great reset is based on a lot of things, food supply, money, uh, the debt system that we have. Um, basically the best way for me to describe our monetary system is like a new car. So when the United States was made, we kind of created uh, our monetary system and it kind of grew into something. And basically I kind of called it a new car and this new car worked great. It was very practical for all the things we needed to do. And then a few decades go by and, Oh, you got to start doing a little maintenance, a little maintenance here and there. You got to get a, uh, you know, make sure it's got oil, make sure, uh, you, you know, you change the water in the radiator and maybe you know, check the tires once in a while and a couple more decades go by and pretty soon, you know, you alternator goes out, you got to replace that. And, you know, the battery, you got to change your battery and um, it's time to rotate the tires and a couple more decades go by <laughs> and the car's still running. It needs a tune up. You get kind of tuned up and um, it just has a little little issues, but you can kind of fix it. A couple of things are broken on the side, but it's still functional. And a couple more decades go by, and uh, maybe you even get in a car accident, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna get that, you know, collision repair and get it kind of running, kind of fix a few things, um, you know, tune it up again, replace a few parts. Uh, maybe you know some of the seats are falling apart, uh, but it's still functional. It's it's doing its job." couple more decades go by and this thing's falling apart. It's got bailing wire. <laughs> it's, it's constant. It's not very reliable. Uh, it's not quite, you know, uh, the gas mileage is bad. It's burning oil. Um, you, you know, constantly got to put it in the shop and, and pretty much, you know, you go a couple more decades and this thing is almost useless. And, and that's kind of our monetary system. We've used it to the to the max because it's a debt based system, and uh, and and it got taken advantage of, and it's been pushed and prod and and moved around and used and and and, and abused uh, to a point that it's they're concerned. So this great reset will be kind of something like replacing that big car now. The thing is, it won't look the same. You remember many of years and decades and centuries have gone by and that transportation you had when it's replaced or the great reset comes along, it may not look like what we're used to seeing. And, uh, you know, in this case, it could be uh, when you talk about money, it could be the crypto system. It could be uh, uh, going back to a gold and silver based uh, uh uh, currency, um, you know, they really want to get into digital money and things like that. But it's, I just, um, I know it's going to happen and they're going to do something. Well, why are they doing all this? Well, one of the problems is population, not just here in the United States, but United States is getting up there, but there's a lot of people. And when you start doing the math, the great elites are starting to kind of like go, how are we going to sustain this? We, we got to do, you know, so that's where all this, well, sh we should control them. We should do inventory tracking. We should know what people are doing in and out. And that's where you're hearing all this, you know, um, 
tracking systems of where food is going, all that, and why they're looking at alternative foods. And, and he got big investors looking into alternative fruit foods, which in turn are playing politics to get people to quit using certain types of foods. So maybe we'll start eating bugs or eating more veget you know, vegetarian type of stuff. But that's just as bad as being on an animal base, so on the environment. So here's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to fail. <laughs> I think they're going to try. I think they're going to, I think trying to get the whole world to be under the control of a handful of elites is kind of like trying to herd cats. Oh, you'll, you'll herd these cats and you'll get a few of them in the cage, but the other ones will go fleeing off to the side. And then when you're not looking, the ones you already herded got out, and the other ones are going, well, and it's just, they ain't going to, I mean, they'll try, they'll do, uh, and they'll fail. I, I really think they'll fail. Um, what's really going on is everybody wants thinks that the way we're going to fix things is by technology, by control, by inventory, by um, controlling the masses. And I suggest, and I think this is what's going to be discovered, is people are smarter than that. I believe people are going to figure out what's going on, that food's not sustainable, and raising animals and stuff, uh, uh, needs to be looked at totally different. I truly think what's going to happen is people are going to learn that they need to take a step back, not forward, back. And then two major things are going to happen. Learn how to grow our own food and learn how to take care of our soil. But we're not going to get rid of growing food, and I don't believe we're going to get rid of... Um, eating animals. Uh, we've done it for thousands of years. And in many places, they've learned how to make the circle connect, put it that way. So um, there's a couple of ways. Um, I think people are going to have to start getting away from the cities. Uh, cities are necessary for a lot of things to happen. But I think People need to learn to get away from the cities. And we're starting to learn that through virtual work and things like that. Not everybody can do that. But doesn't mean that if you're in the city that you can't start being more self-reliant. Now, the problem with the way that we've raised food and things is because we're not using practices that sustain the soils. And so what we need to do is teach a lot of old farmers new tricks. And there's a whole new movement of how to grow food and how to grow animals. Uh, the two connect together. And uh, actually, if you've been following our channel and uh, Ranger Rob Country Living, you can actually see us doing our form of how we're going to rejuvenate our garden and our soil using our animals. And so you can do it at all kinds of levels. For example, uh, Justin Rhodes is a great channel to watch. He's got a farm where he uh, shows how he rotates his animals through his fields to sustain his fields to last a long time and to grow food. And he's doing it, I believe, 18 to 20 acres. Um, I'm doing what I'm doing on five acres, but... Really, people with a half an acre to an acre could really start being more self-sufficient, grow their own food, and one is not have to rely so much on the grocery stores. Plus, if we start utilizing our community and our different types of farmers markets, just because I might grow some pigs doesn't mean I have to grow beef too, even though I like beef. But maybe the farmer down the road does beef, but he doesn't want to raise pigs. And once again, all these animals can be fit into nature's way of rejuvenating the soil and not being wasteful. And a lot of times you can actually feed your animals without buying feed if you can, if you have enough acreage and enough grassland to rejuvenate it by rotating your animals rotating your chickens, rotating your animals, let them till the soil, let them re-energize the soil, uh, replant the soil with uh, when you're not using it with cover crops 
and all the whole cycle is, um, is it's healthy for the environment and people learn to balance with nature and still grow food. And that's where we're falling drastically. We have farmers that they just look, they want to be as sufficient as possible. And so they use practices that are not good for the land. And yet there's other uh, farmers that are starting to wake up and realize how they can rejuvenate their, their soil, how to uh, utilize animals to re make the soil healthier. Uh, there's even things out there like aquaponics where they're sending uh, using water in a self-sustained um, way where uh, fish are involved and they'll actually pass their water through the fish tanks. Fish, you know, have waste and they do things to the water. Well, when you circulate that water in through um, a, a growing system, uh, the plants love it. And it's like a self-filtering system. One is you're feeding your plants and two, you're taking care of the waste of the animals and you're growing fish at the same time. Um, it's amazing things people are doing. So uh, this reset, I think will fail. I'm pretty sure it will fail. But I think what will happen is a lot of people will realize that they need to be more self-sufficient. Now, will there be pain and anguish with all this change? Yes. Some of it is going to get very ugly. And it's too bad it's going to be this way because there's elites that have one way that they think it's going to go. They think technology and control is going to be the way they're going to take care of the populations. And I think technology... Um, I think humanity won't let that happen. Oh, they'll try. And there's been countries that have tried before and it didn't. <laughs> have you seen one at work yet? Um, China's trying to do it, but they, once again, they got a bunch of cats in there. They're just trying to do what they want to do. Uh, it just isn't, you can't sustain that. However, there is people learning how to change their ways. There's a lot of great homesteading uh platforms out there showing you how to utilize your property and keep your soil healthy. And not only that, being more humane to the animals that we uh, grow and uh, butcher, um, where you can do large quantities of animals or feed your family without um, being cruel, giving your animals a very healthy and um, well-sustained life for them uh, without um, caging them up in little cages and you can get let them uh, and you'll get better quality meat and healthier meat and less chemicals need to be used some of this craziness of some of the foods we got the chemicals are insane not only that there's so many farmers doing this healthy kind of um, farming the people are kind of not going to the grocery stores as much and are ordering their chicken and some of their uh, meat from these farms that are doing basically organic growing of chickens and, and pork and the whole works. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, here on our property, we're doing the same thing. We're taking our chickens. Our chickens are pooping all over the place. We take their poop and their, and their hay and it goes into compost. Our compost, well, because the droppings from chickens are, is what we call hot, uh, high in nitrogen, I believe, you have to get a chance to break down. But anyway, that's a great place to put in compost. The next thing we do is um, that's going to work for our gardens. The next thing we're doing is buying rabbits. Now, a lot of people buy rabbits for butchering, too. Sherry and I really probably aren't going to do the butchering part, but we want is the magic pellets. Because um, the waste from rabbits is not a hot, um, a hot waste. It, it can go directly into gardens right away. So basically, we want to have pet rabbits, but use their droppings to help nourish our gardens. And so we can always keep our uh, gardens nice and healthy, and it's working and making all the microorganisms, the whole works. And we're going to use animal waste and... Uh, riding food and things like that for compost and all that to keep our um, soil good and healthy every year. So uh, 
that's our way of doing it. And everybody's going to do it a little different. You may not have as much property. You may not uh, be able to have certain animals on, on your property. I can't have cows on our property. Um, and that's okay. I don't want to raise cows. But down the road, there's people raising cows. I can get my meat there and do co-op kind of stuff there, which I already have. And uh, so it's not like I'm just sitting here preaching. I'm practicing what I preach, doing it in my version, just like you expect to do your version. What I think what the mindset needs to be is people are so used to the instant life of things. And uh, that's probably why we're all getting <laughs> heavy, let's put it that way. That we need to realize that food doesn't just come from the grocery stores. We need to actually learn how to do it ourselves. Whether you want to just go a plant-based kind of thing or do a mix, you can do it. And you can do it in smaller pieces of property. So I imagine more people heading towards the rural areas of cities, yet there'll still be people that need to stay in cities because of business-oriented. But there's still no reason why we can't start growing more things. Why can't you have an apartment building instead of all the rooms? Being, let's say there's a level in the apartment where it's devoted to aquaponics. And everybody that moves in has an investment in the aquaponics and then can have food that way. Why can't we do more uh, uh, gardenings on roofs of some of these buildings? There's a lot of things you could do in the cities to also do victory gardens and things like that. And I think that's a way of thinking that I think a lot of Americans will start discovering as this food problem they have where uh, uh, the prices and inflation, everything's going to set us to a point where this great reset is going to fail. And what we're going to end up doing is being more self-sufficient. And I think the governments will start realizing, well, maybe we should let them be more self-sufficient and still have certain controls that make them happy. The great reset will fail. However, I think what will emerge is something amazing. But we're going to go through a lot of lumps and bumps. We're going to go through a lot of even maybe war, division. Um, the elites are going to have this great idea. And the thing is, the cats are not going to be herded. And it um, uh, <laughs> doesn't break my heart at all. Uh, we'll kick and scream and we'll tell them, while this will work, this will be more self-sufficient. Leave us alone. We'll still follow the rules, do some of the things, but we're going to trade things differently. Uh, gold and silver will probably be more popular to us than the, uh, than trying to deal with crypto stuff. Um, all we need is one great power adage for a couple of months, and there goes uh, internet, and there goes crypto, there goes Bitcoin. Um, how in the heck are you, or, you know, getting money out of the bank? How in the heck are you going to do all that without electricity? Uh, I, th I think our... Our eyes are going to be open. I think even the elites are going to have their eyes open, realizing that they are not the gods. Um, nature, the earth is its own god, <laughs> and God controls it. And, and the world, the earth will tell us what we need to do to sustain ourselves. Or the earth will say, it's time to... Uh, wipe the map clean <laughs> so we'll see what happens but it won't be in a great reset it will be in probably what i call a great awakening now i'm breaking into the middle of this report to also talk about this great awakening and i want to spend a couple of minutes talking about it so mankind has got into this new phase of trying to be efficient trying to be uh uh and getting away from the basics of life, the basics of growing, the basics of homesteading, the basics of raising animals. And then we're being constantly fed with negativity about those things. And yet for thousands of years, that's really what we're all about. Animals um, have always been used for, for food. And raising gardens has always been used for food. And some of the basics of what we've done in farming uh, have uh, gone on for ages. But we've all drifted away into this uh, food comes from grocery stores kind of mentality. And that's more of an American thing because there's other countries that still get it. They know where their food comes from. And so, uh, first of all, the world is not like us. The world, some 
different countries are still um, doing the basics for food and for their families. <clears throat> what really needs to happen is education to go back. We need to move backwards, yet still embracing some of our future technologies and stuff like that. We've learned a lot. One of the main things is maintaining animals uh, in a humane way and maintaining our soil. Soil is important. You can't keep just growing stuff in the same soil without turning it, without adding to it, without adding nutrients to it. And the way to do that naturally <clears throat> is between raising your uh, gardens, rotating your gardens, and introducing your animals to the garden. Let them do the work for you. Let nature do the work. And we don't have to have gigantic pieces of property to do this. Some of the things I mentioned earlier in this um, uh, show was I have chickens. I have chickens that produce eggs for me. The chickens I feed, I have to buy their feed, but I can also feed my chickens with scraps. And eventually, the more the bigger my garden it gets, the more scraps I have for my chickens, which means it's less feed I have to buy, which takes the pressure off of the United States to create more soy and more grains and stuff like that. Those animals will feed us with eggs. And if I wanted to, I could actually do meat chickens and rotate the meat chickens where I could actually make my own chicken. Um, but I, I, I don't need to do that. But if I have to, I will. I will actually build a pen just for meat chickens and still utilize their droppings and what they can do to the soil to help my gardens be healthy and give me really high quality soil. It's letting nature be nature. And that's what we've gotten away from as, um, as, as humans, um, especially in the United States, we've broken away from that. And I don't know how many times I've seen people that do videos that show that they're butchering animals and rotating and in constant comments like, oh, I can't believe you're doing that. I can't believe you butchered it. You killed a rabbit or you killed. And it's like, are you kidding me? These people are so out of touch or where our food comes from. And, and by the way, they say, well, let's just go vegetarian. The problem with that is that's hard on the environment too. It's actually not that cost effective to just be a plant-based hum uh, humanity. Uh, it still takes a lot of resources to grow a lot of food. However, a lot of people with a small amount of property, I'm not talking big farms. I mean, if you can do that, wonderful. The benefits of actually starting to get more self-reliant is amazing. You know, all these uh, chunky people like us, like me, um, have these uh, love handles and all that stuff. Ever since I bought my homestead, I've lost weight. I've felt better. I have drive. Um, and the self-satisfaction of, of, of doing this. Now, I got to tell you, it's hard work. Um, and instead of always wanting to go out and uh, entertain myself with movies and go places and stuff, I've got so much to do on my homestead now that we really just don't leave that often. And with this pandemic stuff going on, so much the better. I've got things to do. We've got animals to take care of, gardens to take care of, greenhouses to build, uh, property to keep up. We have buildings to keep up. Um, it's it's just insane. There's always something to do, but that's good. Our brain is fulfilled with things to do, and then accomplishments are amazing. To build our first chicken pen, I haven't, you know, we've built another pens in the past, but when we were done, my wife and I, we were really proud of ourselves. And we're getting a new garden all cut and tealed and ready to go and starting in the spring. And that's a really good feeling. And it's a lot of hard work to get started. A lot of work, especially if you're going to make like above ground gardens and things like that. You've got to build them and fill them with dirt and, and uh, all kinds of work, uh, things. But once it's going and you keep it up by maintaining the soil and all those, uh, you will rejuvenate your um your soil to be quite productive all the time. The other thing is, is uh, 
seeds. You, uh, you know, starting to be kind of some issues with seeds and then there's companies trying to control the types of seeds out there. But once you start growing things and your plants do, oh, so-so the first year or so, and you keep some of those seeds, seeds have memories and they'll say, okay, we're seeds from, I'm in Central Oregon, from Central Oregon, it gets colder and I need to be a more, uh, uh, the, the plants that did well and you take those seeds from them, will pass that information to the next seeds. And so you'll find like your second crop will be better than the first crop because the seeds are learning to understand your region. It's amazing to underestimate nature is just plain old stupid. And that's really what a lot of people have just gotten away from the basics of nature, the cycle. And it does work together. It's a perfect plan. Gosh, I wonder who invented that. It wasn't the elites. And, it, and so throughout history, man has learned how to treat the soil different. There's others that are doing it. They're just in it for the money and are not treating their soil properly. And then so then their yield is so much less from the year before because they're not treating their soil. They're not rotating it. They're not introducing animals to it. Um, it's a different kind of farming. It's a different way of maintaining things. And people are going to, uh, there are already people moving away from the cities because of the politics and all that stuff. But while you're doing it, think differently. How can I be more self-sufficient? So buy a house a little farther out with maybe a half an acre or three quarters of an acre, you will be amazed what you can do. And what region you're in doesn't matter. I lived in Arizona. Arizona's hot. You know that, right? Actually, there's two seasons of growing in Arizona, which I had no idea. And you just, you raise certain things in the fall and you can raise other things in the winter. And you can actually have a, a pretty self-sufficient garden going until it gets really hot. And then the uh, there's a, a period of time, just like in any any region, where growing isn't that good. And that's where you learn how to preserve food. So you like green beans. Grow a shitload of green beans. And then learn how to dry them. Learn how to freeze them. Learn how to freeze dry them. Learn how to can. Learn how to vacuum seal canning. Learn that, and you will have a pantry full of yummy food that's healthier than anything you can buy at the grocery store. So yes, I'm sounding a little preachy on all this, but you know what? We need to change our mindset. It's time for a paradigm shift. It's time to learn that you can begin now. It's going to take time. I've been here all a half a year gotten quite a bit done. I've got chicken pins built. I've got a greenhouse in work. I've got a garden cut and ready to go. I don't have my my homestead running at 100% yet because it took time to build the structures. It took time to plan it out. I've bought my seeds already. I have them stored. Um, I During that time, Sherry and I could we took the time to learn how to do some of our own canning. We're learning how to do vacuum sealing. We just purchased a freeze dryer. It's endless because I'm going to get so many eggs. What am I going to do with them? I do not want to waste my food. I want to preserve it. So we've learning and we're learning how to preserve. And it's fun. It actually is fulfilling. It's fun. And Believe it or not, it's really nice ha not having to go to the grocery store so much. Is it more cost efficient? Not necessarily. Is it better quality? Yes, much better quality. Our, if I was to raise my own chickens, I know what I'm feeding my chickens. I know what they've been eating. I know I didn't have to give them a bunch of antibiotics and things like that. Um, I can grow some really good food. So I'm Rob Scribner. I want to thank you very much for watching Easy Street. Uh, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And uh, please leave some comments. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, guys, think about it. Learn to prep. Learn to make your own food. Then learn how to preserve food. And learn how to feed yourself. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos 
all over the whole wide world. Thanks. <laughs>